we are going to have an Open the Quran Day, so if you would like to come and learn about the doctrine of abrogation, um, why there seems to be a disconnect between the Mecca surahs and the Medina surahs, we would love to have you come to any of our um, Open the Quran Days, so we can discuss that. Now, we all of you to do that. So we're happy that um, other cultures are the teachers and parents and principals are being made aware of other cultures um, and what their their uh, different customs might be that could interrupt or be an issue in the public school system. So we don't have a problem with that at all. Um, then they go on to ask for special accommodations, for instance, uh, not scheduling exams or other assignments. Um, you know, making up assignments and, and things if the student misses it, which most students, if you're going to miss something, if you're on vacation or your parents take you out for some reason, you can make up that, that uh, assignment. Um, we have a little bit of an issue with that. We don't think that you should get special treatment based on your religion when it comes to exams or assignments, um, no matter what the reason is. The problem that we really, really have is CARES wanting to come and speak to our public school children about Islam. Um, <clears throat> and we'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. But, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk, and Sharam is gonna talk a little bit about this. So, I think that's where we are. So that's why we're here. We're gonna be discussing textbooks, some of the activities that have been going on during, um, during the class, uh, classroom day, and uh, we've got textbook and personal uh, testimonies. So, Sharon? Well, thank you, Carrie. Um, I appreciate Act for America putting this event on. I, I thank you, each of you, for coming here tonight, taking time out of your schedules, out of your family time. And um, this is an important event, and this is an important time. And the reason we felt that it was so important to be able to have this town hall because it's time that people know exactly what is happening in our schools. It is time that we as parents know exactly what is happening under our schools. And there has been a systematic attempt to silence anybody who comes out and wants to educate the public. And CARE has been one of those groups that has threatened to sue, that has sued states, we'll talk about that tonight, that have wanted to protect their laws and protect our Constitution from infiltration of Islamic law and Islamic curriculum. This is what we have a problem with. As Carrie did a great job of explaining, there are many students in our uh, schools that have different backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. And there are sometimes special accommodations that are made where if a student has to leave class, can't attend class for some reason, especially if it's reli a religious reason, then schools do their best to accommodate. But it stops there. We don't accept demanding. We don't accept a written letter, a, a letter written to all 295 school districts saying that we expect you to change exams and change tests and be able to allow us to come in and teach curriculum. Especially we'll show you tonight what that curriculum is and how th that curriculum <coughs> violates the current laws that are there according to our Supreme Court, according to the fact that we're supposed to have separation of church and state. And yet you'll see what is happening in our schools. And where is the ACLU? Where is the ACLU in standing up to be able to say, this is not okay, we have problems with this. We'll show you a video uh, of something that happened in Massachusetts where kids were taken to a mosque, and you'll see what, what happens there. So tonight, in, the, in the, this presentation, let me just open this here, is not about hating any group. It is not about trying to come in the way of the religious obligations of any group. But it is about making sure that as parents we have a right to know exactly what is happening in our public schools. And it is important to understand who CARE is and who their connections are with so that you guys can make a good decision of whether this is a group that we want telling our school districts what to do. And if this is a group that we want representing the Islamic community. And this presentation and my company, The Till Project, is about speaking the truth in love. So please don't leave here tonight hating Muslims. Please don't leave here tonight 
blanketing Muslims. That is not the intent. And if that's what happened, then you know, we have not done our job. The intent is to make sure there's good education and we understand the ideology. I just want to briefly tell you a little bit about my background so you can understand where I'm coming from. Uh, as Kerry mentioned, my name is, is Sharam Hadian. Uh, I was born in Iran. I left Iran in 1978. My, uh, my dad uh, was in the military under the Shah of Iran. We left there. We came to the States. Uh, we left. We didn't really know the timing of our, of our departure. We knew it was imminent because there was an uprising of Islam in Iran. Six weeks later, the government fell. The Shah was ousted. The Ayatollah came in. And the Islamic regime was, birth, was birthed in Iran. And uh, Sharia law, Islamic law, took over in Iran. Um, I won't have a chance really tonight to talk a lot about what happened to Iran uh, and what has been going on for the last 32 years, but I encourage you to educate yourself on countries that have lived under Islamic law and see what is happening in those countries. When I left Iran, I uh, came to the States, and then uh, some circumstances moved my family and I up to Canada. About 13 years ago, I, I came back here legally after waiting about eight and a half years to get my green card and another six plus years to become a proud U.S. citizen. Um, about 12 years ago was when my life dramatically changed, and that is when I became a Christian. I became a follower of Jesus Christ, gave my life to, to Jesus, Amen. left Islam, and um, my life uh, just drastically changed. It's been an amazing uh, story. Again, I wish I had more time to go into that part of my story, but for the sake of uh, focusing on what we're talking about tonight, I won't. And I'd be happy to talk with people afterwards, by the way, as well. Um, I am currently a pastor. I've been a pastor for the last nine plus years. Currently pastor a church in uh, Everett. And uh, I've also uh, been a police officer with the city of Redmond, been a teacher, coach, small business owner. I am the founder of the Truth and Love Project, as I said, traveling around the country speaking on these issues. And um, as Carrie mentioned, I am a candidate for governor uh, for uh, Washington State in 2012. And I do believe that we need to have leadership leadership in our state government and our federal government that understands these challenges and understands these threats that we're facing. 